All right, guys, it is 9 o'clock on a Friday. I'm sitting here lecturing by myself. So sad, so lonely. Hopefully some of you will watch this later. Oh, there's Michelle. Hi, Mr. Hennings. Hi, Michelle. How are you doing? I'm good. How about you? I'm doing okay. You're the first one in here. I'm going to go ahead and, and get started mm -hmm. uh, so we can get you started uh, as quickly as possible. All right? Okay. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do, Michelle, do you have any specific questions for me before we begin? Uh, no, not really. Okay. So the, the purpose of this is just basically I wanted to give a resource for students to get started or to get um, on that assessment that I posted yesterday mm -hmm. about the period and frequency of a pendulum and a uh, spring. So I'm going to go ahead and um, let me see. Are you see? Can you see the board, Michelle? Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll pick up, first of all, uh, with... Uh, the gizmos. Remember what we did the gizmos before? Most people have done a pretty good job on that. Mm -hmm. The last page of that, students were coming up with uh, this idea, that the ratio of the period over the root M over K and the ratio of the period to the pendulum of the root L over G was about 6.3. Does that sound familiar, Michelle? Yeah, it does. Now, so every, some people recognize 6.3, some people didn't. Did you, did you leave it at 6.3 or did you express it as something else? No, I did leave it at 6.3. Okay. Absolutely, that's fine because I think most, most people did. But um, 6.3 is really close to 6.28, right? Mm -hmm. And 6.28 is two times... 3.14. Do you see where I'm going with that? Yeah. So really what we're saying is that this ratio is equal to 2 pi. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So then if I solve it for t, the period, I would just multiply by the root underneath in the denominator, right? So yeah. t would equal, and I'll just do it here. M over K and T would equal two to pi L over G. So does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Now that's important. I'm going to go ahead. I want to display the screen here um, and show you a few things. So you'll notice, uh, are you looking at, can you see on the screen the assessment that I posted yesterday, Michelle? Yeah. Okay. So what you'll notice is here is a graph, and I'm going to come to this graph here in just a moment. But the rest of the questions are all based on springs and masses or pendulums, right? And uh, the standard reads that we, we understand something about the period and the frequency of, of these things and spring constants. So we'll get there in a moment. Um, I also want to show you then the other resource. Here's the AP reference sheet, and I know that this looks familiar to everyone. If I keep scrolling down, these are the equations then that are going to be helpful to solving uh, the problems on that quiz. So I'll scroll down here. We've dealt with a few of them before. Let me just find one. Well, you see these right here? Yeah. This is the definition, right, of period and frequency. And then here's what we just defined. We said that the period of a spring should be 2 pi root m over k. The period of a pendulum should be 2 pi root l over g. So those ones we just went over. Here's an important one. This was called Hooke's Law, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. And then we also had an expression for elastic potential energy, uh, which looked like right here, one-half kx squared. So all of these equations down here are dealing with period, frequency, pendulums, and uh, masses on springs. So I'm going to pull back here. And again, can you see the board now again, Michelle? Yeah, I can. Okay. 
So where to get started then? It all, you know, the pendulum problems on that quiz are all kind of by themselves. And this will be your, your guide to solving or answering those problems, right? Just understanding that the relationship between period is related to L and G in that, in that manner. But the, the spring problems are a little bit more involved because uh, all of those spring problems, whether it's elastic potential energy, whether it is um, a spring period and frequency, they all involve that value K. And that's something that we did um, a couple weeks ago when we were studying energy, right? Remember, do you remember the lab where we did, we dropped a mass on a spring and we tried to get just to tap a little action figure's head? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, so the first thing we needed to do is we needed to characterize the spring. We needed to find its spring constant or its K. And that's what Hooke's law did for us. And it said, if I apply a known force to a spring, it'll stretch a certain distance and the ratio of that force to distance was the spring constant of the spring. So if you have a really stiff spring, it takes a lot of force to stretch it a little bit. If you have a looser spring uh, or more flexible, it would take the same amount of force, we'll, we'll stretch it more. So what we did first in that experiment is we had to find K and that was as simple as this graph. And that's how the, the quiz starts off. You have a force versus distance graph it's linear, so it's y equals mx, and really what this graph is, is it's Hooke's law, f equals kx. So all we need to know then really is the slope of that line for k. And then k is a value that I can use to find period and frequency. k is a value that I can use in elastic potential energy. Right? When we have that expression, um, and I think that's, that's it. You need those for uh, the quiz. Do you have any questions on that, Michelle? Uh, no, not right now. Okay. Well, that's all I had planned. I just wanted to give students, because I thought some students might struggle with how do we, what's that first graph? It's been a while since we talked about Hooke's Law and elastic potential energy. So I just wanted to uh, get something out there to help them get started on the quiz. But if you're working on that quiz, that's good. You're right where you need to be. And don't hesitate, you know, to email me with any questions on it. Okay? Okay. Thank you. All right, Michelle. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye. Bye.